Welcome to Is This a Ghost? I'm Clayton Smith, and each week I tell my uh, real friend Patrick a real ghost story from real history, and he doesn't take it real seriously. Uh, that's kind of the whole thing. But it's fun, like in a fun way. Yeah, yeah. I think. I have fun. Yeah, I was going to say. That's, uh, that's but I'm also solid. drinking, so. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the best way to listen to this podcast is with a drink in hand. Yeah. And with three drinks already in you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got some catching up to do, now is the time. I went back and I, I was listening to the Amityville episode today. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> newly embarrassed at having no idea what the hell the Amityville horror was. <laughs> I thought when I was <laughs> researching it, I was like, here's what I'm going to do. The big reveal. It'd be like the prestige. Uh-huh. And then I did the reveal and you were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, well fuck this. <laughs> I guess this is a story that Clayton knows a lot about. Like, have you so seen the movie? I remember the movie exists. Well, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Like, I knew it. the movie exists, but yeah, I'm but... not going to watch that movie. Do you ever watch horror movies? Not really, no. Not really either. Number one time. One, they're scary. They are scary. I don't like that. I, I don't have time. Like, if I have time, I'm not going to dedicate something that's going to scare me. You know? Yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I'm on board with that. Well, I, so I used, to, I used to think that I should try to watch more scary movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, so what, <laughs> when we worked at Blockbuster together, mm-hmm. there was one, one time when I was like, I've never seen Blair Witch Project. By that point, it had mm-hmm. been out for like four years or something, four or five years. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch Blair Witch. I'm going to rent it from Blockbuster. I'm going to bring it home tonight. I'm going to watch mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, you know, we we worked until, you know, midnight or mm-hmm. so. And I went home. And then my roommate, Joe, uh, then surprised me by not being home, which is sometimes oh. a great surprise. Yeah. But I had thought, like, oh, Joe will watch this with me. Yeah. And uh, he was not there when I got home to watch Blair yeah. Witch Project for the first time. And so I was like, well, it's it's 1230 in the morning. And... I'm all alone in this apartment, but mm. I'll, I'm going to watch this. I'm, it's be fine. Yeah, it's an atmospheric thing. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll totally yeah. get into it. You this know? is going to be cool. Sure. So I turn off all the lights. I don't want to waste electricity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I sat in the dark at like 1 a.m. and I watched Blair Witch Project. And I have never been so fucked up <laughs> while being sober <laughs> in my entire life. That movie, I went, I brought it back to the next day and I was like, oh my God, have you guys seen this? And they're like, yeah, of course we've seen it. It's yeah, we, pretty old. So this years God. ago, you idiot. And I was like, it's horrifying, isn't it? And they're like, not, I don't know, kind of, not really. And I was like, no, it is. <laughs> yeah. The scene where you, at the end where you walk in the basement, the girl's yeah. just standing in the corner, not looking at you. And they're yeah. like, well, yeah. I was like, ah, that's yeah. terrible, right? I couldn't sleep. Um, so the next week you're like, have you guys seen The Exorcist? That movie is so scary. <laughs> have you heard of this thing? Oh yeah. my god, it's a little and old, so, but I think you guys might like it. Anyway, so two weeks ago I watched the Amityville Horror, and I thought, oh my god, this is real. We should do an episode on it. <laughs> um, but no, since since I since I got so scared by um, by uh, by the Blair Witch Project, and no one else that I knew <laughs> thought it was very scary at all, I thought maybe maybe horror movies aren't for me. Yeah. I've 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 ta- I've uh, I've I've narrowed my uh, my my selections uh, since then. Sure. Yeah, I had a similar experience last night. Kind of a tangential, tangentially similar, but similar experience. I went to see a soccer game. Uh, I can't wait to see how this is related. Go on with with an Englishman. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's one of those things where you kind you know of know an Englishman. I do. I, my 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 neighbor's an Englishman. Um. This is new information for me. My, my cross street, my cross the street uh, neighbor. He's a I find it interesting that you've Englishman. never told me this before. Born and bred. It doesn't come up often. Does he refer to himself as an Englishman, or is this kind of? I don't. He has a huge. He has a has the huge Union Jack on the back of his car. So I would say yes. Well, he I love refers, that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Go on. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I we, we they had a soccer game. You know, a few of the dads What's a football neighbors. match. I was, yeah, what, I've yeah, been watching no, a lot of Ted Lasso, and I yeah. know that it's a football match. Yeah, there was a, a bit, a bit of uh, parlance correction throughout the night as well. But yeah, <laughs> <I bet>. watching, <laughs> yeah, watching, watching a soccer game, and I've been to like maybe three live soccer games, and I can remember about ten minutes total of all. Well, of them. we did at one point have season tickets to uh, Chicago Fire soccer, and we did mm-hmm. go to most of the games that season. So I'm uh, including that in the ten <laughs> minutes, by the way. <laughs> Well, like actually watching soccer with, you know, an Englishman who's, you know, done nothing but watch soccer his entire life. Sure. And just like all the commentary and, oh, can you believe he, he, he's that, that bullish on the 18? And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's very, he's bullying that on the, eight, on the 18. <laughs> yeah. I also noticed that. I didn't yeah. want to say anything, but yes. 
uh, yeah, it was similar as in I immediately felt outclassed. Like, yeah, y- yeah, okay, maybe this isn't necessarily for me. Maybe I so. Need in to- this analogy, is the game or is the Englishman the uh, Blair Witch Project? I think the game is the Blair Witch Project, and the jaded coworkers are the Englishmen. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, okay. I am you. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's fair. That's harsh, but fair. Um, so you don't watch Ted Lasso, I assume. I do not. Yeah, all, all the Ted Lasso comments yeah, in the so good. Yeah, in the in the text string. I do hate so much. Me. So as you know, but we'll we'll let everyone else in. So mm. uh, there's a there's a small group chat. Uh, mm-hmm. about baseball news that mm-hmm. you and a couple of our friends uh, are very active in. And I sometimes chime in and say, oh, wow. <laughs> and <laughs> really? Because <laughs> yeah, I don't follow the baseball news as much. Um, but uh, I did, while I was putting Maple down to bed tonight, I I, I came out of her room to see a, a big string of messages. And you had, uh, you had sent some, uh, some pretty, some pretty sad news <laughs> about our, our Cardinals. Um, and uh, and I had uh, replied with a Ted Lasso joke, and then I scrolled down to read the rest of the comments that the other folks in the string had made, and they were also all Ted Lasso. They were jokes. also all Ted Lasso. I was like, God damn it! I, <laughs> <laughs> such a fool right now. Uh, uh, good show though. Maybe someday. It is like the only show that I think I've ever seen that actually makes me happier for watching it. It's a very uplifting, wonderful, happy show. Okay. Yeah, I guess they, I guess that, that I guess they make that nowadays. I mean, I don't remember a show that was like uplifting. No, it's like the and first one. I think it's the first of its yeah. kind. Yeah, hmm. I really, I really can't think of a show that like made me feel actually like a better human being just from mm. watching the show. Maybe Tailspin. Maybe Housewives yeah. of Las Vegas. Well, that's that's more, that's more <laughs> of a relative thing. Like, Tailspin. Boy. That's a deep pull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we were at Disneyland <laughs> earlier this year, uh, I told Aaron, I was like, you know what? I think next time we come to Disneyland, I really want to. I want to have like a character. I want to go bounding. Do you know what bounding is in terms of in the Disney park? I do not know. No, I'm not familiar. So if you go to Disney parks, you if you're over the age of like 12 or something, you cannot mm. wear costumes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, they'll, they'll confuse you with the staff, basically. Yeah, right. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, so bounding is the term for when you wear clothing that is like meant to, you know, kind of mimic or kind of evoke a character. Uh, but it's not a costume. Okay. Okay. Like wearing, you know, like like wearing Baloo's outfit from Tailspin with the yes, exactly. The right. So you're not like the, wearing yeah, okay. a bear costume, but you're right, wearing exactly. like the hat and the the tech khaki shirt. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's bounding, and I was like, you know what? I think next time, like I and I, that speaks to me a little bit. Is a mm-hmm. you know, I, I like to be like a little bit into things, but not all the way. So yeah. bounding is like perfect for me. <laughs> and I was like, I really want to think about um about something that could be like a, a me thing for like what what, mm-hmm. what, what I, next time I want to bound. Right. Like, what's the what's the right Disney IP character for me? And there, you know, there are so many. Um, so we were talking about. It, I was thinking about it, and she said, "You know what could be good for you is Darkwing Duck." And I said, "Oh my God, Aaron, that's perfect. I love Darkwing mm. Duck. Like, that was one of my formative cartoon sure. shows. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm in. Like, yeah. he was pretty much dumb and you know aloof <laughs> and like made a lot of mistakes, but also like mm-hmm. really hard and yeah." Like, uh, maybe sweet superhero costume yeah maybe thought he was more intellectual than he really was yeah and i, mean, I get this that all, and this I, is, this is... And i think that's great yeah uh but and now he darkwing did... duck is good right. he does wear a mask though i don't think they'll wear a mask in i don't think place. he does actually he does. i think he wears like a little black doesn't he wear like a little black mask Start with the would eyes would you like to see um i have please. a comic book oh, here please. with him on... all right let me yes. grab this yeah. book one you just wait i have all the time in the world <laughs> Well, first, I want to show you this. So they recently released Darkwing Duck number one, a new they rebooted the comic series, Okay. which is, you know, there's no monetary value here, but I it means so much sure. to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a variant cover by this artist, Clayton Crane, hmm. who is phenomenal. So this is this is the cover. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Right. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. All the villains. Negatron is on there. Mm hmm. Uh, the other ones now mm. he you okay so you are right and i get I, that i am correct yes. <laughs> he does have the purple mask um so that's true but like purple like coat with the buttons he's got the cape he's got the blue ascot it's a pretty sweet costume yeah yeah the over yeah, the oversized purple fedora is going to be really all you're technically going to need to bound as dark queen duck that's right so so she said that and i was like aaron that's actually perfect well, thank you for saying that because that's perfect mm. and then so i was like well maybe we could start on this trip by finding a 
a pin. So pins are a big thing in uh, Disney. Yep. Right. That so part was, of my yeah. yeah. Maybe we can find a Disney, uh, Darkwing Duck pin. That would be like my inspiration, my, my, my starting point. Sure. We looked, all the Darkwing Duck pins were like three inches. And I was like, that's too bad. I, I can't possibly pull off a yep. three inch pin. Be serious. <laughs> um, but I, I showed her when I was like, it's too big, but it's pretty cool. But, you know, and she was like, who's that? I said, well, this is Darkwing Duck. She goes, oh, that's not who I was thinking of. Wait. And I said, wait, when I said, like, who's the Disney character who really kind of represents me, you didn't think Darkwing Duck? Because I thought it was kind of a dead-on thing. She goes, no. Sure. What was I thinking? She said, what's the one from Tailspin? And I said, are you thinking of Launchpad McQuack? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah, that's him. And I said, <sighs> unfortunately, unfortunately. Don't say it. I'm more of a launch pad. I'm kind of team Aaron on this one. I yeah, really, I'm more I'm of so a launch sorry. pad. I I'm know. Sorry. It's, the, it's the jaw. It's the jaw. Is the uh, thing. Don't, you know, it is, don't say I mean, that. It is. Nah, it's I'm sorry. Fine. It's I'm fine. Sorry. I mean, he was good. He's earnest. I like launch pad. He's very good. Um, mm -hmm. He's kind. He's, uh, mm -hmm. he has know. like a very, again, like a very dauber quality to him that I think you, uh, <laughs> you evoke. <laughs> uh <laughs> this has come up before hasn't it <laughs> we have which we is have ironic discussed. because yeah. you are the one with the name of a character that dauber actually voices on uh, uh, square pants okay fine all right so maybe this is why the podcast flows so well because we're both basically we're both, the dauber. Same, the same we're dauber both the dauber of this <laughs> there's no there's no coach there's just dauber uh, they said you couldn't make a podcast with two daubers but we <laughs> proved them wrong hmm well, this gives me a lot to think about. Do you want to hear a ghost story? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's just plow on, plow on past all that. Dorothy Walpole was born on September 18th, 1686 in Houghton Hall. I think it's Houghton. H-O-U-G-H-T-O in Houghton. Houghton. Houghton, okay. right? In, uh, in Norfolk, England. Uh, she was born to Robert Walpole and Mary Burrell. And she was their 13th child. Ah, lucky number 13. Can you imagine? <laughs> like, I know most children didn't survive back then, but still 13 children. Oh, there's like, there's, there's like seven kids in our whole neighborhood. And when all seven <laughs> of them are outside, it gives me, it gives me a fucking migraine. So I can't imagine what birthing 13 of them and housing oh 13 God. of them would even resemble they could have had two basketball teams and each mm -hmm. team has a water person and one of them gets a towel person <laughs> that's, that's too many kids uh this is dorothy's life so uh she's the 13th child uh now one of her brothers was robert walpole who was quote generally regarded as the first prime minister of great britain G wait hang on hang on isn't that like a <laughs> they keep better records of that, right? You like would that. think you would yeah. know who your first prime minister was, but apparently the undisputed <laughs> first prime minister. I mean, yeah. we know who our first president was. There's no doubt. Yeah. Um, I mean, we wrote it down. It's <laughs> what, you know, this is a whole thing apparently. And I was like this, I thought this, how do you not know that this can't be real? Mm -hmm. And so I dug a little deeper and uh, apparently this is a whole thing. People are like, <sighs> I think he was the first. <laughs> there was a lot going on, <laughs> admittedly, back then. It's very confusing, but her brother might have been the first prime minister of Britain, <laughs> or maybe not. Um, anyway, so as Dorothy grew older, uh, as as some people do, she uh, she married a man named Charles Townshend. Town mm -hmm. Townshend. Townshend. Town like Pete Townsend. Is his name? Does he have an H? Yes, Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend. Yeah. Yes. Final answer. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Phone Pete... a friend. <sighs> no, I will Google it though. It's Almost certain it's Pete Townsend. Yes. Pet GPT. How do you spell Pete Townsend? Oh, it is Pete Townsend. Okay, you're right. See? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I'm glad you're here for this. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was going to tell the story to the void, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so she married a man named Charles Townsend who was the second Viscount Townsend, uh, not to brag. Undisputed or? But, uh, yeah, undisputed. Or, all right. They wrote that one down. He was, uh, so he was pretty important. He was a leader in the House of Lords, which is their, uh, their Congress, basically. Mm -hmm. He was also very notorious for his violent temper. Mm. 
Uh, now she, now Dorothy was his second wife. Um, and <laughs> I think this is a detail that is worth noting. So Wikipedia puts it like this quote in 1713, Charles Townsend, second Viscount Townsend married Robert Walpole's prettiest sister, Dorothy. Hmm. Okay. It's, <laughs> you know. Oh. <laughs> they weren't sure which one was prime minister, but they were sure they which, knew which one, one of Robert's sisters was prettiest. <laughs> that they did write uh, down, for sure. That either says a lot about Dorothy or a lot about the other siblings. <laughs> I'm not sure. So Dorothy moved into the Townsend family home. This was a a, a quaint little uh, country cottage mm -hmm. called Raynham Hall. I'll just uh, just so you have an idea in your head of this, how this it's a cute little place. Um, it's it's probably pretty humble. I mean, he's a he's a politician in the yeah in the second Viscount. Yeah. So um, so I'll just show you a picture of what it looks like. Just so you have a, it's like a, hang on, it's like a summer home. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> so that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's not Versailles, but right. it's more Versailles than my house is. So <laughs> oh, by quite a lot, yeah, I would say. I, yeah, it's um, it's very uh, it's very Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. It's more Downton Abbey than your house. Mm -hmm. It's very. It's it's almost Downton Abbey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> so Dorothy goes to live there at Raynham Hall, and she's like, "This is great." <laughs> it's a big house yep. and I live here now. Uh, now, construction on Raynham Hall it had begun earlier in 1619. In 1620, Sir Roger Townsend, he took his mason, whose name was William Edge of Raynham, uh, on a 28-week trip around Europe so that he could gather inspiration for this house. After they started building it. Okay. So, like, they started building it, they're like, this isn't very inspired i'm sorry like this looks like just bricks so, like, on this the foundation looks yeah. like garbage are you sure you know what you're doing do you want to go on a 28 week trip around europe to see how you how it could be <laughs> this, this foundation just looks like a big rectangle to me well yes that's exactly how, no 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 that's not what i want not what i want on to the ship <laughs> so he took him around europe and uh, and he did find lots of inspiration so uh rainham was quote the first of its kind and uh quote one of the outstanding country houses of the period this was a genre defining house now i don't know what genre means in terms of a house being built but mm. it was uh, not that uh and this is another quote except for its hipped roof and dutch gables rainham could easily be mistaken for a house built nearly a century later hmm. so it was very forward thinking it was sure. very you know um it was very great futuristic great house. yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's like the jetsons mm -hmm. if you were in england in the 17th century yeah it's like 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 a like an apple store that you live in basically it's kind of what it sounds like yeah i think it's like that mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense that's what it reminded me of yeah <laughs> it looks exactly like that <laughs> and so it's like it's like if the apple store but all the glass was brick mm -hmm. and it was different that's what that that's what it would look like <laughs> So Dorothy moves in and she's she's loving life. But over time, she starts recognizing that her husband is kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at this point, I tried to research his political career, but it, it was so boring. <laughs> it was so boring. <laughs> um, I didn't get very far. Here, so here's mm. a, he was a Tory. I know that. Mm -hmm. And then he was a Whig. Mm -hmm. That's both oh, parties. Yeah, so right. Yeah. Swapped those. Um, he was Secretary of State for a while. And then there was a South Sea bubble. And I, I don't know. It's so boring. It, <laughs> this... it, it just it, fuck, it went on and on forever. It's yeah. so, but none of it made any sense. So, mm -hmm. like, reading about like the English government is very much like reading Alice in Wonderland. Like everything <laughs> sort of makes sense, mm -hmm. but it's all very different and weird. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those where like you you realize you've been reading three paragraphs, but you couldn't tell anybody what the last three paragraphs had been about <laughs> right. exactly. Right. Um, um, it did make me grateful that our government history doesn't start till seventeen seventy six because they worked all these kinks. 
God, the shit your government can build up for itself when your country's been around since like 900 is insane. It's insane. <laughs> there are so many like titles. It's so stupid. Mm. Um, but but there, it was a long political history, so he's a big deal. He's a big. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a big deal. Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> I can't swear to it, but <laughs> the length of the Wikipedia article alone makes me think probably pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was definitely involved in politics. And between that and the fact that Dorothy's brother <laughs> might have been the first prime minister of England, <laughs> of Great Britain, uh, <laughs> she, so she starts to become very familiar with politics. Of course. Yeah. Um, she also starts to become very familiar with some of the politicians. Oh, okay. okay. Quite familiar with Thomas Wharton. Uh, okay. All right. Now, Thomas Wharton was the first Marquess of Wharton. Mar- the Mar- I Googled Mar- it. I said, how do you pronounce this? And Google said Marquess. And I said, I don't, I don't think so. Are you sure? It, like, it sounds like it'd be Marquis, right? Marquis, it does, right? but it's not. It's M A R Q U E S S. Oh, they put the extra S. Never mind. Yeah, but you got. There's it. no I. So yeah, it's. I think it's Marquess. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Is the is the Q U like a just a K or a Qua?" Yeah. And Google said Qua. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Very helpful. Okay. We do have a lot of listeners in the UK. So I look. Hey, friends. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm also very sorry about your iPhone that you just smashed on the ground listening to this. <laughs> very sorry about like, that. Like we left you all behind for a reason, and uh, we're not looking back. <laughs> Um, you anyway, know, so Thomas Wharton was, uh, he was, he was pretty fun. He, <laughs> he was known for being, uh, quote, a debauched and irreligious character. I read a few fun stories about him. And the best one is that in 1682, he got absolutely rip shit. And then he broke into a church in Gloucestershire and he urinated on the communion table and defecated in the pulpit. <laughs> uh, and it, it and it barely admitted to it i mean they like or, or was caught in the act i'm not sure i well so actually it's funny you ask i was gonna say this but uh so i think it became rumor like we think thomas was the one who did this um <laughs> and uh supposedly there are some sources who are like it became clear to us that he was the one who did this when several years later he was like speaking at uh at parliament mm-hmm. and someone who was there was like Aren't you the one who who defecated in the, in the pulpit? And he did not say anything, but his face turned red, and he goes, "I, oh, I many people have then, defecated he didn't in know what to say. pulpits." So, <laughs> so people took that as uh, as verification. This is probably true. Um, so he was uh, he was a real <laughs> he was a real character, but he was also very charming. Clearly, I mean. <laughs> Right, uh and uh and he charmed the pants off of dorothy so dorothy (laughs) meets thomas and he is so exciting it's not long before they start having an affair obviously right now they there there's some dispute about this historically they may have actually had um they may have been romantically involved before dorothy married charles um may or may not be true but either way they either Mm -hmm. resumed or started kind of Mm -hmm. you know taking i know how it works yeah taking it to the taking it to the 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 sweet spot uh (laughs) (laughs) after she was married um so yeah oh oh no i had a line for this damn it so either but either way after she was married, they started going to Pound Town. And this was going to lead me to the question to ask you. Hey, did you see like a few years ago, there was this Zillow listing that went viral because. Oh, my God. Yeah. House of Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> Where like the whole house is filled with signs of like live, laugh, love. Yeah. And, you know, wash your dishes. And uh-huh. over the bed, in the bedroom, over the bed, there was a sign that said, welcome to Pound Town. <laughs> It's just amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. in 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 London. Uh, oh, there is a God. Don't don't quote me exactly on this, but I believe that the the for some time the dollar store in in England <laughs> was referred to as Pound Town. 
<laughs> oh god I hope oh, that's true and i thought my god can you imagine <laughs> like asking about can i please can i please just have can i please you know, go to pound town? please <laughs> all my mates are going to pound town and i desperately <laughs> desperately want to go um again we have quite a few listeners in the uk <laughs> hey can you all let we don't, I don't want to Google. Can you please correct all of that. I don't that want to Google UK no. Pound Town. So <laughs> could you just let us know? You can send an email to is this a ghost at gmail.com and uh let us know. Let us know your thoughts. Mm. Um please don't. Bit, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If if you've ever been to Pound Town, just email us and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that means to you, just let us know. And uh if uh if you if you if you have comments about our our British accents, please don't please don't send those though. I don't need to know. I nope. I mean I know already. I know. I know it's bad. We know it's great. Uh okay, so Dorothy's going to Drillville three times a week. And I <laughs> which <laughs> After I heard the pound town, I was like, all right, how many different names for towns yeah. where you have sex can mm-hmm. I come up with? And I wish I had come up with Drillville. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reddit Reddit took care of that one for me. Mm. I liked it so much. It was better than anything I came up with. But um, if you have better names for towns where people have sex, please email them to isthisghost at gmail.com. Um, but Dorothy's driving to Drillville three times a mm. week. And eventually, Charles discovers like she's having an affair. Mm-hmm. And he is predictably not, not on board. Mm, yeah. Uh, and remember, he has a bad temper, famously mm. so. Mm-hmm. So he goes into one of his furies. He throws Dorothy into her chambers, and he locks her in. And he never lets her out. Oh. So he feeds scary. her. And he gives her food and water and stuff. Okay. Um, but he literally never lets her out. Now, her chambers, I think, were confined to, like, one wing of the house okay so it's not like it's not what's the uh it's not like the 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 devil going to ireland with the (laughs) where they locked the baby in the wall (laughs) which was literally one room right a little bit better than that Mm -hmm. uh even so it is yeah it's 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 a it's a bit more rapunzel than you probably would would, oh it's not good it's not yeah yeah, it's not great uh so so she's locked to i think of a a wing of the house and he does not let her out and Mm -hmm. again he never lets her out for the rest of Mm -hmm. her life now once this happens people who are around (laughs) and who like know her are like hey where's dorothy uh we haven't seen her in a while and so charles i guess i this was not in the reading but i assume he's like ah oh ah she died (laughs) she died she died so he does tell people she died I think it's a panic and the, on his part. <laughs> and the funeral was only for close friends and family, and you are neither. So, well, sorry. Not exactly. No. So he starts telling people that she died, and they're like, when's her funeral? And he says, it's next week. <laughs> and he holds a funeral, and he buries an empty coffin. Mm. And uh, and people stop asking where Dorothy is, so it was very effective. <laughs> um, oh no! So this, okay, so this is what I think. There, so so she's in her room for most of the time, but then after a few months, like he's sure no one's asking about her anymore because they had a funeral, right? Um, and so everyone everyone assumes that she's mm. dead. So Charles then lets he feels pretty confident. He lets her out of the room. Now she can wander the wing. Okay. Yeah. That's what it is. She's confined to one wing of the house. <laughs> um, she's not allowed outside. Mm-hmm. You will scare your friends <laughs> because they are pretty sure that you're dead. Don't yes. ask why they think that. You're in your pre-ghost phase, and look, yeah. you may become a ghost shortly, but you're not there yet, and we don't want to <laughs> We don't want to alarm anyone needlessly. Remember how you said you really wished you could get out of that knitting club? Well, do I have good <laughs> news for you? Um so so she never leaves random hall again and in 1726 uh, after being locked in the house for almost a full year uh she actually really dies Mm. and she died under (laughs) so (laughs) there are like a couple sources that say she died under mysterious circumstances Mm. which does not seem to actually be true yeah probably um you're so close (laughs) so (laughs) As Wikipedia puts it, quote, she died under mysterious circumstances or possibly of smallpox. No. 
<laughs> and like every other source is like she absolutely she died of smallpox yeah now so you were you were <laughs> you were you're, you're so close um now i don't know how she contracted smallpox i'm guessing one of the filthy servants yeah yeah, downstairs maybe like, people you know maybe like her husband like gave her like a special blanket to sleep with and she was like oh this is so warm and then <laughs> he's like i had this shipped in from america would you yeah. like it <laughs> uh, uh she somehow got, contracted smallpox and that is what mm-hmm. killed her um which ah, that's some bad luck i don't mm-hmm. know that's but anyway so then charles so that was in 1726 uh, a few years later 1730 charles retires from politics and he became quote interested in agriculture <laughs> <laughs> and he got and i'm not joking you would be amazed at, at the resources for this he got super mm. into crop rotation specifically turnip experiments oh, there are okay. entire books and books and books and books and books mm. and books and books written about his turnip experiments mm-hmm. and how were those books by the way i assume you read I, a handful of them at least they were interesting <laughs> <laughs> they had words uh, and titles, and that was cool. Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh, he he. <laughs> during this time, he I guess unsurprisingly, in hindsight, earned the nickname Turnip Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now he's actually credited, despite you know basically murdering his wife, he is mm-hmm. uh, credited as a major figure in England's agricultural revolution which mm-hmm. is the thing that is um, it led to the increase in Britain's population between 1700 and 1850, which mm. led then to the industrial revolution. Right. Yeah. He was like, he was a major player in the whole run up to the thing that changed the entire world forever. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so he's kind of like the, like the George, like if George Washington Carver had also murdered his wife, like, it, yes. That's basically oh, he's okay, like that. that's yes. Yeah. 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 That's a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And if you want to ask Patrick questions about that, Patrick's email address is. <laughs> I have a hundred uses for the peanut, including <laughs> killing my wife. She has an allergy. <laughs> now I have a hundred and one uses for peanuts. <laughs> I bet that's what he said. I'm, like. so I'm, so, I'm so I'm sorry. I love George Washington Carver. I really do not yeah. like. Uh, <laughs> defaming him like this but you know yeah it's you know it was sitting right there i really don't have an option (laughs) um anyway so so back to this story so okay so everyone's dead charles eventually dies turn up old old turnip townsend also dies Mm. of old age um and then we're gonna fast forward about a hundred years okay in 1835 the new lord, or is it the the current lord of Raynham mm-hmm. Hall, who is also named Charles Townsend, but it's not the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he invited an assortment of guests to celebrate Christmas at the manor, and this is this story. This is where the story gets. It's it, this is a this is us. This is is this a ghost at its most Downton Abbey. Mm-hmm. So he invites all these people to celebrate Christmas at the manor. Mm-hmm. And these people come from all over Great Britain, and they have such a joyous time, and they stay They're for like a week. Fucking and... little hats and the poppers. Yes. No, yeah, I've, I've seen Doctor yeah. Who. I know how this works. Okay, okay. yes, yeah. exactly the same. But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so they all, all these people come over, and uh, the first night, so the first, you know, the the welcome party ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone goes to their rooms, and um, on the way to his room, oh, I miss it. So one of the guests was. Uh, Colonel Loftus. Hmm. Now, does that name sound familiar to you? Loftus certainly does. Yes. Yeah, because we did Loftus Hall mm-hmm, right. a few weeks ago. Um, I didn't look hard, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't see. A, <laughs> We're going to say it's the same guy. Just, I see, I didn't, it's, yeah. it, this was several hundred years later. I think two or three hundred years later. But it mm-hmm. may it. It's incredibly yeah. possible that it's the same family. Mm-hmm. Sure. I would yeah. say likely, actually, based on kind of these paths of these families mm-hmm. is actually quite possibly a descendant of uh, the Loftus Hall family. Hmm. Which ghost was that? Was it called Loftus Hall? I don't think so. Mm. This is for the SEO. What do we... <laughs> that thing called? Oh, it was called Loftus Hall. Good for me. Yeah, I, I so. did it. Yeah. Yeah.
He made my husband laugh. <laughs> Anyway, hmm. um, but yeah, so he, he, I, it's quite possible he was related to the Loftusall, uh, family. Anyway, so the first night the party ends and everyone goes to their rooms and on the way to the room, Colonel Loftus and another guest whose name was Hawkins, mm-hmm. they were walking to their respective rooms down this hallway when they saw a woman walking down the hall in front of them. Mm-hmm. Now, this woman was not part of the Christmas party. Mm, okay. And her dress was a little out of place for the time. It was mm. a brown brocade dress. And it looked like something. You know what brocade is? I have no earthly clue. I didn't either. I had to look it up. <laughs> it is. And I have now that I say that forgotten. It's like you put stuff on your clothes. <laughs> it's like lace. Is it lace? It's not like lace. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like lace. It's mm. a patterned woven fabric. Is it embroidery? It's the only word, other word I know here. I think so. Ask Ariel. You, Ariel would know this probably. She absolutely would know this. And she, she follows us say, on Instagram. She must. She, listen, you know? Do you think she listens to this podcast? I know she listens. She follows sure us she on does. Instagram. She is so mad right now. She is so fucking mad. She's like right Patrick. Now. God damn it! Yeah. You should know this. <laughs> and she's like Clayton. I knew you wouldn't know, but Patrick, I thought you would know. You were going to come on my podcast now and talk about brocade for forty-five minutes. I'm sorry. You're going to have to. Uh, she has a podcast. I'm sure she does. She's so- <laughs> She's, she's like 10 times cooler than me. I'm sure she has a podcast. If I have one, she must have 10. That sounds right. So, yeah. Yeah, she's got a, she's got a good one. If you have one, she has a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel, if you're listening, I, Patrick should know this. You're right. And I agree with you. And I'm very disappointed. <laughs> um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a raise. It's a, who cares? It's br- So she has a brown brocade dress. That- <laughs> Tune in Ariel's podcast. You want to know what the fuck brocade is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and it looks like uh, something that was in fashion a hundred years earlier. And they, they marked that. And I think that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, they hadn't seen her before. So the next morning, Colonel Loftus asks Townsend who she was. And Townsend is like, what are you talking about? He has no idea. Mm-hmm. And that's confusing for everyone. They search the house. There's no strange woman there. like everyone mm-hmm. who is in the house is supposed to be there so mm-hmm. town no like, yeah no one has a brown dress no one has no one no, no one, one has a brocade brown is. classic yeah. brocade dress <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh, uh... <laughs> oh okay so the next night loft is uh once again going to bed and he he has a he has a thought because he sees the brown lady again and this is what she'll become she'll come to be known as the brown lady because of her brown brocade dress Mm, okay um he sees her again and she's walking away from him the same way she'd done the night before Mm -hmm. and this time he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna get to the bottom of this yeah so he hurries after her Mm -hmm. and he calls out women love this by the way yeah like totally this, yeah. <laughs> this mysterious woman i will chase her through the halls of this, of this house. Oh, hello. <laughs> i was hoping someone would approach me in the dark castle yeah. that i've never met before how interesting um so he hurries after calling out at her she doesn't respond she just mm-hmm. keeps walking mm-hmm. which is i you know what most yeah. people I think, would, yeah. would do everyone i've yelled out on the streets does the exact same thing and none of them are ghosts <laughs> and i so. do it a lot and <laughs> so but loft is finally he he catches up to her he reaches out and he grabs her arm to stop her mm-hmm. and he grabs a hold of her and he turns her around and the woman in the brown dress turns to face him and her eye sockets are completely black Ooh. Loftus doesn't mm. like this. He mm-hmm. that's not what that's not what he was expecting. Mm-hmm. Can yep. you fucking imagine? Hi God, <laughs> just uh, so terrifying. Uh, he's preparing for some cute young filly, <laughs> and she has he gets, no eyes. Said he gets something from They Live, turning around and staring at him. <laughs> so he starts screaming. To his credit, he starts screaming because mm-hmm. <laughs> this is you know one of the more relatable uh, protagonists in our stories. <laughs> So he starts screaming his fucking head off and the house staff all rushes to be like, what's going on? Mm. Um, by the time the staff gets there, the brown lady's gone. Mm-hmm. Now Loftus is still screaming. He cannot mm-hmm. process what he has just seen. Yep. 
uh, he tells the staff what what happened, and um, and most of the staff quit on the spot. <laughs> which i think is good that's a that's a move i would pull for sure oh yeah yeah, yeah. sorry you saw a woman here in this hall where we're standing mm-hmm. with uh with black holes for with, eyes yeah in this place where mm-hmm. i work um i'm nope yeah i'm out i'm out for sure <laughs> <laughs> so so most of the staff quits and uh <laughs> so word of the brown lady the ghost of random hall it spreads and in 1836 uh a man named captain frederick mary marriott not spelled like the hotel m-a-r-r-y-a-t marriott, marriott. marriott. Yep. uh he has a theory now how's your your tooth okay you're oh, digging, i got it no i got it, man. I got it. I'm, good. Okay. I'm good i'm good <laughs> Uh, now, Marriott was a friend of Charles Dickens. You may have heard of him. I have, indeed. Um, and Marriott was uh, himself, he was an author, and he was the author of a series of popular, supposedly, sea novels. Hmm, okay. I should write a sea novel. No, you totally should. Yeah. I don't even know what that would be like, but I should do it. Are sea novels like the, are they, are they like the, like the pulp paperbacks of the day? It sounds cool, doesn't yeah. it? Like, it really yeah, does, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like the uh, the the detective stories of the '40s, but on a ship, right? Yeah, if yeah, feels pretty good. Probably a like young guy goes to sea, you know, like a very with an old like, grizzled captain. Yeah, exactly. You know, find a lot of really hot ladies on an island somewhere. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's Act Two, and then <laughs> they uh, get chased by pirates. Maybe they're ghosts. Maybe they're not. And uh, at the end, they have some big battle with it. Destroy the bad guy. Go back to port. I think you've described the Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it again, uh, uh, Homer. I was getting there first. Um, so anyway, so this is a pretty famous uh, novelist and friend of Charles Dickens. So he's a, he's a big deal at the time, and his theory was that the quote unquote haunting mm. was staged by. <laughs> and mm. I I don't know where this theory comes from, but he, his theory was that the haunting was staged by local smugglers who wanted to keep people away from the area. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more to mine there. I don't, <laughs> I just, um, yeah, there's there's some puzzle pieces that don't really don't really snug up real nicely there. <laughs> like, right. hey, hey, Jim, you know your sister, you know, with the black eyes that are just empty sockets. <laughs> Have her come by the castle. Have her come yeah. to this castle where these people live. That is not, yeah, like a smuggling area. It's a very wealthy part of the country. Yeah, and go ever hang out there for a while to yeah. see if we can keep people away from it so we can smuggle wait yeah i don't know so i <laughs> ever wear that brown dress oh you want like you want all the embroidery on it no the no no it's not embroidery. yeah the brocade <laughs> so i don't know so I, again i'm sure there's more to learn there but i <laughs> we don't have time <laughs> so so that was in 1836 so marriott asks if uh, if he can spend the night in the house to prove his theory that it's just smugglers it's just smugglers yeah and townsend is like i sure man i don't know mm-hmm. sure why not like yeah. anything you know mm-hmm. if you utilities can... are turned off but you can go hang out there if you want yeah, <laughs> yeah. also it's so weird like i you know I, it's obviously not smugglers but like if you can you know i what i assume townsend is doing here is like you're gonna come here you're not mm-hmm. going to find smugglers because I know there's no smugglers right. in my ass. Yes. Um, and you're, I assume, not going to find a ghost. So, like, you come here and then you write about how you didn't find anything that mm-hmm. kind of saves the house reputation, is my assumption. Sure. Property value goes back up. Yes. Your, your, and Z, you, your Z estimate uh, recovers and. Boat to you, the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Marriott goes and he spends three nights at Raynham Hall. And he asked specifically to sleep in the room with Dorothy's portrait on the wall. So that's, just, that's a little sick. Which part? Asking to the, sleep there, or that there is a portrait on the wall? I the 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 portrait thing. That's just again. That's kind of like the like the going to the bathroom and doing the uh, <laughs> the Bloody Mary trick. You know, I don't a little think that's, bit. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but I mean, it, it makes sense that her portrait was on the wall. Like she was a resident of this house several mm-hmm. hundred years ago. Yeah. um so you know they do that but uh but yeah so but i i kind of respect this move actually because he's like 
I'm going straight to the heart of if it's actually Dorothy, I'm going to go to the place where Dorothy is going to pop out of her portrait, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he did think this was the most likely place to see her mm-hmm. ghost. Yeah. I really don't want to be here for three nights. If I get fucked up on the first night, then I can get back, <laughs> yeah, back yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. I can go tell my friend Chuck uh, what's going on. We can write a ghost story together. And that becomes a Christmas carol. Anyway, so he, so Marriott sleep, he, he, he sleeps in that room. He does sleep with a loaded revolver under his pillow. Can't be too careful. Which mm-hmm. I just, I, this has come up before and I just, we can't say it <laughs> enough. I don't think bullets are going to do much against ghosts. I don't know. I don't know. Wh- I don't know what this is about. But I, oh, but I guess if he thinks it's, uh, it's smugglers. Guns I, probably are pretty effective against smugglers. Yeah, they're yeah, almost 100. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so, <laughs> I've so seen Star Wars. Like I know how it works. <laughs> Stop them right in their tracks. <laughs> yeah. So um, now, so he stays there with a with a gun under his belt. And what happened during his stay was chronicled several years later by his daughter Florence Marriott. Mm-hmm. Now the first two nights, nothing happened. But on the third night, there's a knock on his bedroom door. And there were two young men staying in the house also. And again, this is a huge fucking house. Like, and again, I, you know, I don't want to keep bringing Downton Abbey into this, but if you've right. ever seen Downton Abbey, yeah. you know, it's yeah. very typical for like multiple kinds of people to be staying in multiple rooms around the house. Sure. They're like hotels. Um, and so there are two young men staying in the house and these were uh, Townsend's nephews. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were the ones who knocked on the door and they had come to ask Marriott if he would give his opinion of a new gun they had just gotten from London okay again i bet there's more context here somewhere i just don't have time <laughs> so mary it's like yeah i'll come take a look at your gun but he grabs mm-hmm. his revolver and the kids are like what are you doing <laughs> yeah please don't shoot us yeah uh and Marriott joked quote in case we meet the brown lady ha 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 uh and everyone laughed so they go to the boy's room. Marriott checks the gun. He's inspecting it. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I guess it's fine. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. Gun. He, he's just like, yeah. sure, it's cool. This will kill lots of people if you want, I guess. <laughs> and so when it was over, the boys, he's like, I'm going to go back to my room. And the boys like, we'll go with you. We'll walk with you. Mm-hmm. Um, again, quote, in case you meet the brown lady. Yeah. <laughs> and they all laugh again. Like everyone's half joking, like, oh man, wouldn't it be so silly? Yeah. But I am but can so we all be scared together, please because yeah. <laughs> this is hot as shit. <laughs> so they're all walking together down a dark hallway back toward uh toward the room. Mm-hmm. With all these gun. guns. With yeah. uh well, I think they left their gun in the uh, place. So there's only one I would gun. Not. I would not. No. No, I, yeah. If if you're if you're legitimately scared that you're gonna meet some sort of ghost, it certainly doesn't hurt to have You think so? I think I, it might hurt a lot to have a gun because a gun, again, is not going to do a thing to a ghost and it might distract mm. you from uh, running or doing a thing that is good to, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, but if it's like a Scooby-Doo Defended. scenario, you're, you're going you're gonna, to That's you're gonna true. Blow. Oh, you want to shoot that yeah. person yeah. right yeah. in the heart. <laughs> the blow a hole in the, in, in the, in the groundskeeper, wherever the fuck it is. Yeah. And he, <laughs> you want to take care of him. And with his dying breath. <laughs> I would have got away with it <laughs> if it wasn't for you. That That's a good point. Damn revolver. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they walk back down the hallway, and as they do so, they see a glimmer of a lamp coming toward them. Now, one of the young men says, uh, "Quote again from um, uh, Marriott's daughter's uh, recounting." Quote. One of the ladies going to visit the nurseries, I suppose. Um, so I guess also in this place, there was like a place where all the babies were sleeping and one of the, the house, mm-hmm. the, uh, the downstairs people was going mm-hmm. to visit them. And so Marriott is like, I don't know. So he sli- he, he sees the light coming down the, the, the hallway and he's like, let's go into this empty room. So they open the door, they mm-hmm. slip into a room, brings the boys in with him. Um, they close the door, but in this is described in a way I don't understand, but the door is one of the quote old style doors, which uh, you close it, but there's still like a slit, like an inch or two slit between basically where like the hinges are. Okay. I don't know. Apparently that's yeah. a thing that like a shitty thing. door. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's like it's like a <laughs> shitty door for a really nice place. We spent all the money on the stone outside, and so yeah. you get and this. we miscut all the doors by an inch. <laughs> and we're gonna right. call it a style because yeah. mm. <laughs> 
So, so they go in the room, but they are peering out through the slit in the door and they watch the woman, the, the woman as she gets closer and closer and soon she's close enough. They can make out her face mm-hmm. and Marriott starts to get very concerned because it is the same face that is hanging above his bedroom on that portrait of Dorothy With and eyes or no eyes. She seems to have eyes. Oh, so that's, that's good. An improvement. That's good. Yeah, it's much yeah. better. <laughs> And she's wearing a brown brocade dress. Mm, that's so this is, <laughs> and it's, this, is, this is Dorothy. And he becomes very, uh, very nervous. Uh, he waits for her to pass. But she comes. So she's walking down the hall. She comes to the room where they're all hiding. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. <laughs> and suddenly she stops. <clears throat> and she turns toward the door. Mm-hmm. And then she, again, quote, grinned in a malicious and diabolical manner at him mm. through the slit in the door. <laughs> so Marriott is terrified. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, straight out the window time. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't care which floor you're on. <laughs> it's time to go. Straight out the um, window, straight out into the field screaming. I am yeah, done here. But you've forgotten that he has a revolver, so he's fine. So he <laughs> so he started blasting, obviously. So he is terrified. He throws open the door and he starts screaming and he fires the revolver straight into her face. <laughs> While screaming. Like, is While it, screaming, yeah. yeah. Someone needs to make this movie because it, it's going to be very good. <laughs> Now, he shoots the revolver into her face while screaming. Mm. And when he does, the ghost of Dorothy vanishes, disappears, thin air, Mm. gone. Yeah, sure. The bullet lodged in the wall across the hall. Mm -hmm. Now, all three of the men had seen her very clearly. And they'd also seen her disappear very clearly. Um, And no one knew what to make of any of this. Mm. The next time the brown lady was seen was in 1926. One of the children uh, who lived in the house at the time, uh, he and his friend claimed that they uh, had seen a ghost on the staircase. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in September, on September 19th of of that same year, 19, uh, oh, sorry, 10 years later, uh, 1936, Captain Hubert C. Provand came to Raynham Hall. Now, Provand was a photographer for country life magazine mm-hmm. which was a very very popular magazine at the time possibly still today actually he was assigned to take photos for an article they were writing just about the house not about ghosts just about right. like, yeah. the architecture and how mm-hmm. forward thinking it was blah blah uh now provan and his assistant took a photo of the main staircase and they were resetting the camera to take a second photo when Provence's assistant saw, quote, a vapor form gradually assuming the appearance of a woman. And then she started walking down the staircase toward them. Provence immediately took a photo, which I assume took nine hours. <laughs> uh, and then um, the photo that developed was this. Nope, that's wrong. That is our audio track. Don't don't look at that. (laughs) Take two. The photo, the photo that developed was this photo. Oh, they think that's what a woman looks like. (laughs) Well, I mean, do you not think a woman would look like that? These guys, I don't know. I think they might need a little bit of practice. If you well, here's what I'll say. (laughs) I don't think at the time many men wore veils mm-hmm. this way. That looks to be like a veil or a hood. Um, it's... it could be. I mean, it could also. Again, like I don't get woman shape out of this. I maybe I maybe like very puritanical type uh, uh, individual. You may think, oh hey, hubba hubba. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't you raise that sheet one more inch so I can see some of that. You know, <laughs> so that forehead. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I will say also, this is obviously one moment captured in time. They saw her walk down the entire staircase. Okay. So there may have been more. I don't know. That's fair. That is what they saw. But the fact that she seems to be wearing like a hood or a veil or something mm-hmm. is important. And like, if you, this also looks like a robe situation or like a, mm-hmm. a flowy dress that she's hiking up or something. Cause there's sure. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, keep that in mind. 
because that'll be important for our purposes. But yeah, I mean, they were watching her walk down the steps. So they are like, mm. there's a woman walking down the steps. Yeah. Whatever mm. led them to the mm. idea of woman. I don't know, man. I wasn't there. It was 1936. <laughs> We've been on this photography trip for like six weeks. Everything looks like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my wife. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, so there is this ghost at Random Hall. The brown, the brown... There is this ghost of Random Hall, the brown lady of Random Hall, who has appeared uh, not too often, but when she does, people are like, holy fuck. Um, now, she hasn't appeared lately, but but I know what you're thinking. The story is great, obviously, mm-hmm. but is there a Disneyland connection? Oh. And I'm happy to announce, Patrick, that yes, there is a Disneyland connection. <laughs> so in the concept art for the Haunted Mansion, much like for the, uh, with the, John Lafitte uh, episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken Anderson, who is kind of the uh, the one of the minds behind um, the whole plotting out of the Haunted Mansion, he included an illustration of the brown lady herself. Ooh. Now, in his illustration, she was in a brown, basically like a brown like wedding style dress. Mm-hmm. Which probably is on it. Probably counts. Yeah. But he included a veil based on the photo that was apparently taken of her by um right. Facebook. Um, so that, so his, his very specific version was never, uh, included in the Honda mansion, but, um, it was one of the inspirations for the beating heart bride in the attic of the Honda mansion. Have you, and you said you've never been to Disneyland, right? Or only world. Right. I have been, I've been in the haunted mansion, Disney world, but I was also like dragging two children through it that did not <laughs> enjoy it at all. So I don't remember a moment of it. Okay. So I don't know. And I don't know. I've also been to Haunted Mansion in Disney World, but I don't remember if it's, I don't remember yeah. if this part is there, um, but I know it's in Disneyland. Let me mm-hmm. show you. So was this was, was mm-hmm. what? So I was hoping that the Haunted Mansion would be more like Adam's family than it was, but unfortunately. It's its it own thing. Not. Yeah. And look, don't talk shit about Haunted Mansion. I love it. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things of all time, truly, is Haunted Mansion. So you want to tread carefully. Um. So this was the original, and now this this version is no longer there. But Ooh. this is the mm. beating heart bride, yeah, who is taken from that photo and from the kind of the the whole uh, the whole idea of the the uh, brown lady of Random Hall. Yeah, pretty spooky. It is spooky. And then she was replaced. Uh, she was updated. They did a big update to the Haunted Mansion not too long ago. Um, she was replaced with uh, a figure they call Constance Hatchaway, which is an updated reincarnation of the brown lady. Let's see, mm-hmm. Constance looks like this. Oh, that is that is a bit scarier. Yeah. Course, and her face is like video, yeah. so it moves and she like smiles right. and does facial expressions and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Same <laughs> idea. But this is uh, based on the brown lady. This is based on Dorothy, the brown lady mm-hmm. of Random Hall. Hmm. Yeah. So... She's alive and well, sort of, at Disneyland, as uh, as apparently most of our ghosts now are. <laughs> From now on, we own, this is a Disney ghost podcast, and I love that for us. Um, but that is the, uh, that's the story of uh, the Brown Lady of Random Hall. And hey, listeners, if you liked this and you haven't done it yet, if you could rate and review, that'd be amazing. We would love it so much. Please go and leave us five stars wherever wherever you listen to it. And if um, you're an Apple podcast, go leave a review. Uh, I love. We have a new oh God, Pat. We have some some weird, great new <laughs> reviews, uh, and one that was uh, very good, but you know, a little hurtful that <laughs> I talked about. <laughs> Uh, the exhausted ramblings of two dads of young kids and semi-accurate question mark historical stories, which is, it's fair, but it's hurtful. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, go uh, and you can leave a review too. That would be so great. And uh, and subscribe and tell your friends and tell your family. We, uh, boy, we're just getting started, huh? We're just getting started. <laughs> we are almost at the year mark. At oh my that. God. This is episode, what, 50? So we are two weeks oh, away. Oh, wow. In fact, from one year wild. mark it's wild it is wild <laughs> um so if you want us to do this for another i don't know year or more mm-hmm. <laughs> you could go leave those reviews because that'll be really helpful uh thank you so much for listening patrick any thoughts about uh, ghosts or the world or anything oh any words of wisdom really... or i don't know i'm trying to think of anything of a good uh a good follow-up to drillville 
<laughs> it's, it really, it's tough, right? Yeah, I know. It's hard to come up with a better one than Drillville. It's very good. Drillville, there's Pound Town, like Copulusopolis. But that's like uh, all I can. Yeah, it takes a while to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we will see you next week on Is This a Ghost?